Hey you, what up? Mariam here, welcome to my channel, welcome back. Today I am going to be reviewing and wear testing the new one size turn up the base BBB cream, AKA Beauty Blur Balm Foundation by the one and only Patrick Starr. So this is a product that just came out. I am wearing it on my face right now. And I will say in my monitor, it looks very flawless, but this is before the wear test. So be sure to watch this video in its entirety for a first impression for a review and for a verdict and a wear test on this new product. Do we need it in our lives? Is this the one? Can this work for oily AF acne prone skin like mine? Those are all of my questions. So today I'm going to be answering all of them. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Remember to subscribe hit that notification bell so you can watch all of my videos. And now let's get into this video. One size beauty blur bomb foundation review and wear test from yours truly. Let's hit it. Okay. So first and foremost, let's talk about all the deeds of this new BBB cream beauty blur bomb foundation. Turn up the base by one size from Patrick Star. So first of all, we have 18 shades in this new product, $33. This is supposed to boost hydration. It's supposed to balance your oils. Great for me because I'm oily AF. It's supposed to blur your texture. Also great for me because texture goes hand in hand with oily AF skin like mine. Soft matte, buildable finish. Now this is water-based. One of the top ingredients is dimethicone, which is known for smoothing your texture. It's kind of like a form of a silicone, so it really helps to give you that veil of perfection. Also, it has some glycerin, which is known to hydrate. This is alcohol free, cruelty free, good for acne, for blemish prone skin. Also, it says that this is an oil free product. However, I did notice that this does contain avocado and mango butters. So although it is said to be oil free, we see avocado oil present and we see mango butter, but since it's one of the last ingredients, I do believe that it's considered to be less than 1%. Therefore you can claim that it is oil free, but correct me if I am wrong. I'm not really an expert on this, but I did want to call it out for those of you who have concerns. Now avocado oil is a three on the comedogenic scale, which means that there's a moderate likelihood of clogging pores. So I'm not necessarily sure how great that is for acne prone skin like mine. By the way, you know how I always mention that I have super flawless skin on my forehead? Not today, sweetie pie. So today I don't even know how to put this, but well, my forehead is not flawless. There's bumps all over in the center. It must be some sort of a reaction because I did recently change my diet to a detox diet that is all green. And so I think my skin might be purging just a little bit specifically on my forehead, which is where I never break out. So I am a little bit confused but I think it just has to do with the detox. Anyway, the rest of my skin is pretty normal at this point, but I am going to test this product out in several different ways. Now I will mention to you that Patrick is a dear friend of mine and I did just go to his launch party here in New York for this product. It was actually held at the sex museum. That's right. The sex museum. And I have been there before with one of my friends who was visiting. It's a very peculiar place, but anyway, enough about the museum. Let's actually talk about this launch. So now Patrick told me that this is a product that is best to be applied with your fingers. Actually, while we were talking, I asked him to film this into my phone and if I can just get him saying that. So this is him speaking directly to you and to me. Um, triple threat, blurs texture, boost hydration, balances oil. That's all three. I like to use it with the Secure the Blur Primer. I'm gonna have her try it half the face. That's how you're telling me to do it? Yes, I'm half telling her. Face, I'm oily. Yeah, half the face with primer. Squirt a, like a pea size amount, a dime size amount, and you rub it in and you'll, you'll feel it like and then tap it in and slap the face. Okay. Cool. So apparently I am supposed to rub this in with my fingers. I'm not a huge fan of applying makeup with my fingers, but if Patrick says it, then that is what I'm going to do. And then he told me to do something totally separate for the other side of the face. So I am going to be testing this product out in several different ways. But first let's get to the shades. I did grab three shades all in the medium category. I have medium one, which is a neutral. I have medium two, which is a rosy undertone and medium three, which is a medium with golden undertones. I'm gonna test them all out on the side of the face. Also, I will say this squeezy tube that I love has a very cute release button that just makes this feel 
a little bit more special. It's cool. All right, so now let's test out these shades. I'm gonna start with medium one neutral. Oh, wow. The pigment on that is pretty impressive. And I will say this is a pretty decent match to my current skin tone. Granted, I like to go a little bit darker so that I can match my neck and the rest of my body, but this is pretty good. All right, let's go for medium two, rosy. Ooh, this feels very, very moussey and very pigmented. Yeah, so rosy looks a bit off on me, so definitely not my match. Now let's go for the medium three with golden undertones. Guys, do you see that coverage? I mean, I think it might be time for a thumbnail face. This coverage is pretty damn impressive. Patty cakes. Wow. I would say medium one with neutral undertones is probably my closest match. The other two just seem a little too saturated, just a little too vibrant, but this I can definitely work with. So that is what I'm gonna go for. All right, so what I'm gonna do is apply the one size Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer that I already love. It's great. Patrick told me that the primer and the BB cream, sorry, the BBB cream work really well together. I'm not surprised. I would expect them to work well together since they are from the same brand. So I'm gonna slap some to my forehead because my forehead clearly needs a primer, clearly needs to be smoothed. And then he said for the other side of the face, I could either do like a one and done with just the Beauty Blur Bomb or I can do like a full face with his powder foundation, which by the way, I don't have a shade match in. So I think I'm just gonna designate this side of the face as a one and done side of the face. So what I'm gonna do quickly is blend out this primer just on this side of the face and also on my forehead. Boom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply this medium one neutral on this side of the face using my fingers. So dime sized or pea sized amount is what he said. That was about that much, I presume. And let's see, let's see how it goes. So the consistency of this is very reminiscent of some of those beauty bombs, of some of those original beauty bombs, like the original BB creams from K Beauty brands, you know? It is very, very thick. It is very, very moussey feeling. The coverage is there for sure. It definitely does feel very nice on the skin. The finish is matte. It is full coverage for sure, but I am noticing that it's a pinch clingy to some of my problem areas. Like for sure on camera, this side of the face looks pretty damn flawless. But up close, it doesn't look so flawless. It looks just a pinch cakey in this area where I have some of my problem spots like enlarged pores, like acne scars. So let's see if anything can be done about that. I'm just gonna keep kind of blending this product into my problem area since it's so thick. I kind of understand why Patrick said that I need to apply this with my finger because the warmth of your fingers actually melts this product in. And now that I'm kind of tapping it in, ah yes, he did say slap your face. I have never applied my makeup this way. This is so funny. It's honestly actually doing something. I am perplexed. Je suis confused, but pleasantly surprised. Huh, the slapping of the face really did something, especially when I kind of tapped the product into my pores. It's like literally the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Wait, how did it suddenly make my pores go away? Je suis confused. I think I need another thumbnail face. Wait, how do you apply this? Patrick, let me show you a close up. Okay, so this is my natural side of the face without any product. You can clearly see I have some redness and discoloration. This is what my pores look like without anything. And now take a look at this side. Wow. There's definitely a difference, but there is a slight learning curve. This is what I am noticing. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is apply the same shade, medium one, to my forehead. I don't know if I wanna use my fingers this time. I wanna see how it blends out with a brush. So I think I'm gonna apply just a wee bit of product directly onto my problem areas with my It Cosmetics Complexion Perfection trusty brush that I love dearly. This is like my best friend brush. I'm gonna try to see how this product applies with a brush, whether it makes a difference. So I can see what he means 
when he says apply with your fingers, it works best. I mean, it definitely did apply with the brush, but I kind of feel like I need to slap my face again just to get rid of that cakiness, just to get rid of that little bit of streakiness that I'm seeing with the brush. And also to warm up and to melt this product into my skin. All right, I'm gonna add just a pinch more with my fingertips this time. Just a pinch more, literally. This is a very, very, very unique product. On camera, it looks like I have no bumps on my forehead whatsoever. And honestly, looking at my forehead this close into my mirror, it's made my bumps disappear. So this is what the original K-Beauty, J-Beauty beauty bombs were designed for. They were designed for people with problems, with acne problems, for those post-chemical peel skin concerns. It was really formulated to be able to hide those types of imperfections, which is why it's doing such a fine job at hiding my bumps and also smoothing out the texture when it's applied the proper way. You really do need to melt the product. You need to warm it up with the warmth of your fingers and kind of work it in there by slapping it, by melting it, by maneuvering it essentially. So this is definitely not what I was expecting, but I am intrigued. I am very, very intrigued. All right, let's do this side of the face as a one and done. So no primer. I'm gonna go ahead and use my fingers. Kind of just rub it in, melt it in there. I have a big acne scar right here. And the more I press the product into it, the less I see it, the more it disappears out of sight and out of mind. So I like that. Wow. As you can see, the coverage is a little bit less intense without the primer than with the primer. With the primer, it's definitely more of a full coverage type of finish. Whereas here, it's a little bit more natural. You can definitely still see all of my freckles, but there's a really, really nice blur all across my skin texture. And what I also like is that doesn't feel sticky at all. It almost feels velvety to the touch. A little bit of stickiness, but nothing like you would get with a foundation or with any other BB cream or CC cream. I gotta say, at first impression, I'm impressed. I will also say that I was kind of expecting a lot from this BBB cream, just because Patrick and I share some similar skin concerns and just our skin types are similar. So whatever works for him generally works for me. So I thought that if this is a product that he has created and tested on himself, and if it works for him, then it will most likely work for me. I obviously have not seen how this wears, but I will. But for now, it was pretty impressive. You know what's crazy? I almost like the one and done side more than the primer side because this just looks so healthy and so natural. It doesn't look as full coverage as this side, which makes it look more approachable, fresher, just like more every day, I guess, as opposed to this, which still looks great and I like it, but I prefer this side. Also could be that I was just still learning how to apply this product and here I was a little bit more in the know. But anyway, all right, let's apply the rest of the products onto the face to actually create a look. I'm gonna use this Elizabeth Arden Flawless Finish Concealer that I've been liking lately. Ooh, I'm noticing a little bit of settling right here around the nose. Perhaps maybe I applied too much product. So let me just redistribute that real quick. Now I'm gonna do what I usually do, which is add my concealer. All right, concealer is on. I am ready for my powder. For the powder, of course, I'm gonna be using my one size powder because I love it and I've been a fan for a long time. Generally speaking, I don't use it all over the face because I like to use the Charlotte Tea Powder for my all over the face powder application. But today I'm gonna use it all over the face. I'm gonna gently dust it underneath the eyes and all over the pore zones where I really want to set this Blur Bomb foundation. All right, I am going to set this area around the nose in between the brows. Ooh. Too much powder. I'm gonna set the center of my forehead where I had those massive breakouts. Actually, they weren't massive. They were tiny, but there was lots of them. I'm gonna set that area, and I'm gonna use a much bigger brush. To just lock everything in place. Ooh, cat hair. I'm gonna lock everything in place, and then I'm gonna show you a close-up of what it all looks like with the powder. All right, here is this side of the face, forehead. You can still see the bumps for sure. And now here's this side of the face. Not as flawless. You can definitely see the pores a little bit more, but I like the side of the face more. Call me crazy. But I just think this looks so healthy and so natural. I really love the finish. It's not too matte. I think with the Secure the Blur primer, this foundation becomes almost too full for my liking. So as a one and done, 
so far not having tested its wear just yet i gotta say i like this side of the face all right so at this point we got to find out how does it actually wear and now let's cue in some of that good old time warping music for that wear test and let's get that verdict shall we all right here we are back after an eight hour wear test this is the face at the end of the day no blotting no reapplying just the face all right so let's observe this side of the face first now remember this is the one and done side where i didn't apply any primer i just applied the bbb cream foundation onto this face and concealer and just a little bit of setting powder. I would say this side of the face looks really good. A little bit on the dewy side right here in the pore zones, but overall still pretty fresh. I did add a little bit of blush, which you can still see, but from what I can tell, the foundation is still very much intact. All right, let's uh, move on to the forehead. Now, if you remember, the forehead had quite a bit of bumps and I am zoomed in so close to the phone at this point, but surprisingly, I'm only seeing a few bumps here, but not as bad as it was this morning. So to me, this tells me that this foundation has worn really well across my very textured forehead. And now let's move on to this side of the face which had the primer and also the foundation now you can see that there's a little bit of settling into my pores there's definitely a little bit of the foundation breaking up here around my nose but honestly i think it has worn pretty darn well in this area over here everything looks as flawless as it did when i first applied it on and overall i will say this has worn pretty impressively so what i'm gonna do now is actually grab a tissue and blot my face because realistically that's what i would do if i were wearing this out so let's just blot my pore zones right here let's blot a little bit on the chin let's blot a little bit right here a little bit around the nose and my forehead. This is what the skin looks like afterwards. I feel like I might have removed a little bit of product from here, just looking a little too fleshy, but, 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 I think this is promising. I gotta say, this one size Beauty Blur Balm is definitely a contender for me. It is definitely something that I'm gonna try out again for certain. Although I don't necessarily like applying product with my fingers, with my bare hands, I do like the result. I do feel like this is a product that has a bit of a learning curve. You definitely have to play around with the product and kind of mold it into your skin, into your face and warm it up, so to speak, in order for it to work. I'm so glad that I was able to talk to Patrick and was able to hear his tips and tricks on how to apply this best. Because if I hadn't, I have a feeling that this would be a very different type of video. But the fact that he was the one to tell me to apply this with my fingers, to blend it and to kind of slap it onto my face is what really helped. Bottom line is, I like the result. I like how it's worn. I like it even before I blotted it. So I will definitely, most certainly reach for this product again. There you have it. That is my wear test. That is my first impressions verdict. Definitely stick around for that Faves X Fails video in which I talk about all of my favorites for the month and those products that did not work for me. And let's see if this one size, turn up the base beauty blur bomb foundation actually makes it to either of the categories. With that said, I'm going to wrap this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and for subscribing. More videos over here, click on them, and I'll see you in the next one.